Hello everyone, my name is Moses and you're welcome to Stable Rock Farms. On today's episode, we are going to be looking at the process from start to finish on how to uh, plant your maize, your rice, your soybeans and other crops. So in this farm series, uh, in this particular video, I'll be starting with maize. So I'm going to go over every single process that is involved uh, in the planting to harvesting of this crop. So let's get right into it. So to begin with, um, you need to make sure you have a very fertile soil. So every farmer wants to get good yield for their for their harvest, right? So you need to ensure that you get soil that is fertile. Once you have that sorted, uh, there are a number of other things that need to come into play uh, for you to get a very good yield. For you to get bumper harvest, uh, you need to have good seeds for planting. You need to adhere to uh, the planting requirements, the spacing. Uh, you need to prepare your land very well uh, for planting. Uh, you need a good source of irrigation. You need very good herbicides to kill the weeds, uh, pesticides for insects. And uh, you need very good fertilizer to ensure the growth of your crops. Your farm needs to be weed free. And finally, you need an efficient way of harvesting your, your, your crops so that you don't have any wastages and things like that. So uh, many of these are going to be touched on in this video. So let's start with that. So follow me. So here is one of our warehouses. And uh, we already have, we're already preparing for the planting season. So there are a number of things we have purchased already uh, in preparation for, 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 for this planting season. So, well, as you can see, we're not on the farm. So the part about having fertile soil is, is kind of a given. It's, it's obvious, right? So let's assume you have your fertile soil. What do you do next? Next, for us, we have these. These are our manual planters. So you can see it's a seed planter. Uh, it comes with it comes with a, a place for you to pour your seeds in there and pour your fertilizer in there, and then you can plant uh, in a more efficient way, in a more productive way uh, on your farm. Now, how is this very useful to us? Number one. It can help us adhere to the recommended uh, planting uh, uh, practices. For us, we are going to use 25 centimeters between our plants, with, between our maize, and 75 centimeters between our rows. So each crop, each maize plant is going to be 20, 25 meters apart, and then each row, each row is going to be 75 meters apart. Uh, in a subsequent video, we are going to show this uh, during our planting season, but this is going to be very, very handy for us. And we are also using the basal uh, application, basal method of uh, uh, planting our fertilizer. So what does that mean? On the day we are planting our maize, we are going to be planting our fertilizer. Uh, some of the advantages to this is to help uh, give your maize uh, a very good starting um, point help it start well in the growing process so uh, the fertilizer is going to ensure the roots are very strong it's going to ensure the stems are very strong it's going to ensure uniform uniformity in their growth so that uh, some of these maize plants don't uh, overshadow others and take up too much of the sunlight and things like that when they're growing so a host of reasons why we are we have, we have decided to use the basal application method but uh, again, once the planting season starts and we're doing that, we will explain in, in, in those videos. So we have 10 of these. We have 10 of these and it's going to help us really, really uh, move very fast on our farm. We are maize, we're planting on over 50 hectares of land for maize. And with 10 of these planters, we'll probably do all of that in one day. So uh, it's very, very helpful. Now... What next? We have our land, 
we have our manual planters uh how else are we going to ensure our plants uh get the best so that they grow well we have some herbicides over here we have a number of herbicides uh ignore the names because we are growing different crops so uh for the context of this uh maize uh we're not using some of these herbicides you see here uh, but for the ones we're using we're using roundup uh i believe i will find a bottle of that so that i can show you yeah found it so this is roundup roundup is very important uh to us uh, at stable rock farms because all of our pre-planting uh, herbicide application, we're going to use Roundup. So what do I mean by pre-planting herbicide application? Before our tractor is going to plow our land, we are going to apply Roundup and then the tractor is going to till, you know, plow the land and, you know, this herbicide is really going to go into the soil. So for our rice, for our maize, for our soybeans, we are going to use Roundup for our pre-planting practices. So this is Roundup. Uh, when we are uh, applying this, we'll do videos so that you can see how everything is done. All right. So, in summary for pre-planting, we are going to apply Roundup. A tractor is going to till the land and we'll leave it after a while. When it's time for us to, when we're ready to plant, we'll still bring a tractor. The tractor will harrow the, the already plowed land and then we'll create ridges and we'll use the manual planter over there. We'll use the manual planter to plant our maize. So, so far we have talked about the herbicide we use as our pre-planting. We, we have talked about the planter we use for our planting. We have talked about uh, the tractor. Uh, working on our land. What else do we need to do to ensure that uh, uh, our maize is well taken care of from start to finish? You need to have very, 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 very good seeds. You can see I am stressing on that because that is half of the problem. If you don't have uh, uh, var improved variety seeds, you don't get as, as good a yield as you want, right? So you need to ensure that the seeds you are going to use for planting are very good ones. Even if you can't afford buying the latest improved seeds, just ensure that the ones you can afford, they are clean, they don't have insects in them, uh, they look good, and you know they will probably give you a good yield. So for us, uh, we are using... For us, we are using Premier Seeds. Uh, this is Oba Super 6 Pro Vitamin A Maize. We are, these are the maize we are going to use to plant on our farm. So, uh, all of this is going to be planted on our 50 hectares of um, maize. And um, we are going to, on average, be using between 20 to 25 um, kg per hectare uh, this comes in i believe this is a 2 kg uh, bag so it, it comes in 2 kg bags and we're going to be uh, using about 20 to 25 kg of these per hectare and we're going to plant on 50 hectares so now we have talked about one extra thing that is going to help give you very good yield very good bumper harvest and and reason the reason we are going to plant about 20 to 25 kg is to make sure we give uh the soil very good spacing so that the plants when they're growing up they all get enough air they all get enough sunlight they all get enough nutrients you don't want to overpopulate you don't want to underpopulate you want to have to make sure you have very good uh plants uh size population per hectare all right uh what do we need to do next next is that we have talked about the seeds um we have talked about the planter now we're going to talk about the fertilizer that we use so just follow me to one of the rooms uh at the warehouse now like i mentioned earlier we're going to be 
using the basal method of uh, fertilizer application. So what does that mean? On the day you are planting your maize, you are also planting your fertilizer. So if you can come over here, here we have our MPK fertilizer. So the day we are going to be planting our maize, we'll be planting it alongside this um, fertilizer. So we're not going to spray it on the farm where it's going to be planted just like the maize is being planted. Uh, a few centimeters apart. Uh, and this, the planter I showed you earlier is going to help out with that. So it's not going to be too much work for our staff. All they need to, to do is just pour your seeds in the planter, pour your fertilizer in another section of the planter and you just push and it plants both of them on the same day. So that's another thing we're doing. Now let's go back to where we were because what I need to tell you next is uh, this day. So what else are we doing? On that same day or the next day, we will then be applying a pre-emergent herbicide. So follow me so that we can talk about the emergent herbicide that we're going to be using on our farm. We are going to be using Prime Extra Gold. Prime Extra Gold is the pre-emergent herbicide we're going to be using for our maize. So like I mentioned earlier, we'll be using Roundup as our pre-planting herbicide for our maize. Prime Extra Gold as our pre-emergent herbicide. So this is going to be applied on the farm a day on on the day of planting or a day after. That's that's the method we're using, and this is the herbicide we're using. So uh, with this, you notice that for the next few weeks, you have no uh, weeds on your farm, and your farm gets to enjoy all the benefits of the soil without competing too much uh, with anything else. So that's another thing we're doing. What else are we doing? Uh, 17 days after planting, we will go ahead and apply the MPK fertilizer I showed you earlier. The fertilizer we are going to uh, be planting on the day of the uh, 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 seed planting, right? So we'll plant it on the fertilizer on the day of the seed planting. We'll plant, we'll plant the fertilizer again 17 days later, right? That's what we're doing. What next are we doing? Um, about three weeks after planting, uh, we want to see if we can put into account insects. Um, I'll put in the link somewhere about the insects that are, that have problems for, for maize and the, the, the pesticide we use. For now, we haven't decided on the pesticide, pesticide to use yet. I have a few in mind, but I don't want to say it until I'm sure of the pesticide we're going to use for, 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 uh, for our maize. And what we plan on doing is on the third, fourth, and fifth week, we will be applying this pesticide on our maize crop. Uh, that is depending on what uh, the, the conversations we're going to have with our agronomists. We also want to make sure our maize is very good quality without uh, too much chemical use, right? So um, that is for a little video. So, uh, what next are we going to do? Oh, by the way, all through this, ensure your farm is weed free, right? That's what these herbicides are for. In case you can't afford to be able to apply enough of these herbicides, just make sure even through manual weeding or even through a weeder machine or whatever it is, just try to ensure your farm is weed free. Okay, what will we be doing next? Um, before our maize tassels, we will be applying our urea fertilizer. We, for us, we're going to be going with uh, Indorama urea fertilizer. So, um, at some point, probably week, week, between week six and week eight, um, we will be applying this uh, Indorama urea fertilizer. And then, we're good to go. At this point, we're just waiting for our we uh, our crops, especially in this for the context of this video, our maize to give us a very good harvest. So uh, I am approaching one of um, 
our storage rooms at the farm and i would just like to show you um right here in this cartons are uh, the naps knapsack sprayers so we have the jato uh 20 liters uh knapsack sprayers we have about 10 of these if you can just see here and this line under is still the same jato so um all of these uh herbicide uh applications i was talking about we are going to be using these knapsack sprayers and then um i was also talking about weeding right i was talking about keeping your farm weed free and if you cannot afford to purchase all these uh herbicides you should just try to make sure you have one of these uh the uh weeders this is a four stroke uh weeder and it does an amazing job tilling the ground turning the ground and weeding uh taking out the weeds on your farm uh again if you cannot afford this uh i think we have about 10 of these also um if you cannot afford this then you just you do it the manual way right with the hoe i you just uh make sure your farm is weed free the reason why most of these machines we have um the reason why we have 10 each of many of these machines we have about 15 permanent staff and 10 of those do the heavy lifting uh, with the machines and basically any kind of heavy duty kind of work. So we have 10 planters that we're going to use to plant our crops. Uh, these same planters are going to be used for fertilizer applications. We have 10 brush cutters, you know, the weeders that we use to weed the farm. We have 10 knapsack sprayers that we use to apply our herbicides. Things like that. So you'll notice that most of the time I am showing you some of these machines. They, they are usually 10 and, and this is this is the reason. Uh, a few things that I can mention, a few more practices you can put into that can help improve your yield is at some point, probably when your maize is at knee, at knee height, you could think of uh reaching your 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 plants that's if you haven't already done so it just helps uh bury the roots so that they don't get so much sunlight or they don't uh get attacked by insects or whatever right so uh region also helps with that it also helps to uh, contain the moisture of the water intake and so many other things right? so it's just something you can think of uh uh to do um what am i forgetting I think that's a run, a, a full A to Z on what we're going to do to uh, ensure we get the best kind of uh, maize harvest for our farm. Uh, we are targeting about six, between six to eight tons per hectare for our maize. Um, we will let you know, uh, as time goes on, we'll let you know how this goes, uh, how our yield was and uh, what mistakes we made, what improvements we need to work on, and things like that. Um, a thing of note is, um, what is this plant called? Some call it Lisa, some call it Witch Weed, some call it Trigger. That's a very uh, deadly uh, weed for, for, um, for your maize. So just try to make sure that uh, you, whatever you're doing, you're putting into account that this this weed is very very destructive to your maize so try to get uh trigger resistant uh, um, uh, seeds maize seeds so that you can plant try to manually pull the trigger plants whenever the trigger weed whenever you see it on your farm because the, the each plant has so many seeds right so if you just weed it and you leave it on the farm it's just going to grow back so make sure you manually pull it and take it out of your farm. Uh, legume crops such as soybeans are very, very good ways of tackling uh, striga. So you could think of uh, intercropping for some people. We're not going to do that, but it's just one of the solutions uh, if you want to do that. And a few other things. So these are just some things to put in to put into mind when 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 you are 
you are uh, thinking of planting your maize. Uh, please let us know in the comment section if there's anything you feel we have left out, if there's any recommendations you have, uh, if your own method you feel is better, we all want to learn. Uh, but for us, this is what we are doing and we thank you for watching.